Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are so excited to have two special guests here as we talk about school choice and Denver Public Schools. We are going to wait just a few more minutes to begin, and we look forward to kicking off in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. Okay, good afternoon, good afternoon. We are going to go ahead and begin. Thank you again for joining. I am Latia Henderson and I am on the team at Root Ed Denver. I am our Director of Communications and Engagement and we are so excited to have each of you here today as we talk about school choice in Denver Public Schools. Uh, we are joined by two very special guests. We have Ariel Smith from Transform Education Now, and we also have Kelly, and I, I've even practiced with Kelly, but I'm going to try Kelly Okoye from RAD. Um, so again, we are just so delighted to have our two guests here as we talk about school choice in Denver Public Schools. Uh, this is a very important conversation that we're having right now. Uh, round one for Denver Public Schools uh, has closed and many families will start receiving their notifications. And round two will soon be opening up for families. Uh, so we wanted to have this dialogue to be able to give uh, families and community members the opportunity to ask their questions that they may have about school choice. Um, and make sure that you are all prepared on April 12th when round two of school choice begins. Uh, and um, as we're going through today, uh, we wanted to just go through um, a couple of ways to stay connected with Root Ed. We encourage you all to follow our newsletter. We often send out updates on um, important things like school choice and other things that are happening within Denver Public Schools. Uh, we also share those updates on social media. So we really encourage you all to follow along with us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Uh, as we connect with Kelly and Ariel, we will also be sharing the social media links for RAD and for 10 as well. Uh, so to begin and kick us off, we wanted to share just a little bit about Root Ed Denver. Uh, so Root Ed Denver was founded in 2018, uh, and we are support and we are um, we are passionately committed to ensuring that every child in Denver Public Schools has the opportunity uh, and support to achieve success in school, college, and chosen career. Uh, so what that means, we are passionately committed to a quality education for every student in Denver Public Schools. We make investments uh, across uh, the district and with community organizations to ensure that every family, every student, and every uh, community member is connected to Denver Public Schools. Uh, and we are again so delighted to have you all here. School choice is very important to us because we know it is an opportunity uh, for families to pick the right quality school that is the best fit for their family and for their individual, for the needs of their individual student. I will be passing the floor over to Kelly and to Ariel for them to share a little bit about themselves 
and for them to share a little bit about their organizations as well. Um, but again, while you all are here joining us today, we encourage you all to um, put your questions that you may have about school choice, about RAD, about 10 uh, directly into the chat. And we will be um, having the opportunity throughout today's event to answer those questions. So again, thank you so much for joining us and don't forget those questions along the way. We are so excited to have you here. Uh, and I am going to go ahead and pass the floor to Ariel first. She will overview the work of Ten, introduce herself, uh, and then we will have some time to spend with Kelly. And thank you again for adding your questions along the way. Thanks. I'm so excited to be here. Um, thank you for having me. Um, my name is Ariel Taylor Smith. Uh, I have been a part in some way of Team DPS for the last 12 years. Um, I started actually in DPS as a DPS teacher at North High School, Go Vikings, uh, taught there for five years, um, and then worked at DSST Public Schools um, as one of their community organizers. Uh, and now I'm proud to be the co-founder of Transform Education Now, or 10. Uh, we work with families across the Denver metro region um, to help them as they navigate their students' educational journey. So really excited to be here and talk about school choice. One of the big programs that 10 runs uh, is a school choice program. We support parents who are navigating um, the school choice process. And so I'm excited today to, to answer some questions about how, if you're a parent who needs to still navigate the process, um, to do so. Thanks for having me. Thank you, Ariel and Kelly. We'd love for you to share a little bit about yourself as well. Thank you for having me. Hello, everyone. My name is Kelly Okoye, and I am the Chief of Learning and the co-founder of Radical Arts Academy of Denver. Um, I'm a DPS alumni. I went to DPS for elementary school, middle school, and high school, Montbello Warriors. Um, I taught in DPS for nine and a half years, and I was a paraprofessional in DPS for four years. And Radical Arts Academy of Denver is both an arts program that works to invigorate Denver schools with arts instruction, as well as a prospective K through eight charter school, hopefully located in the far Northeast. Awesome, thank you, Kelly. So Ariel, I'm going to have you kick us off first with our very first question. Can you talk a little bit about how 10 engages with parents um, to help get them connected with their students' education journey uh, and any other background information on 10 that you think is helpful for the community to know about? Sure, absolutely. Um, so we work with parents across, again, the Denver metro area. Um, so have um, parent leaders, uh, in Denver Public Schools, Adams 14, Westminster Public Schools, and Jefferson County Public Schools. So um, if you're a parent who is, is not in DPS, uh, we, we're still, we still want to be your friend. We still want to work with you. Um, we have organized parents around a multitude of issues um, around regarding school choice um, and school quality. Um, so just a little bit about our programming. Uh, we run a school choice program called Parents Choose. Um, we partner normally. Uh, pre-COVID with uh, Denver Public Libraries and we're in the Denver Public Libraries um, little university program for students. So if you're a parent, uh, it's a great program um, of a three-year-old or below. So any uh, zero to three, uh, you can attend these programs at Little University. It's a lot of fun. It's a good way to socialize your students and have fun with them and learn new things and finger paint. Um, but while students are doing that, um, we have been lucky to then have conversations with parents about how to navigate the school choice process in Denver Public Schools. Um, and so in DPS, it's really cool. You're able to attend any school uh, within DPS. And actually in Colorado, you're able to attend any school within the state that's a public school. Um, and so we help parents look at the data of the schools that they are potentially considering um, and help think through like what programming matters to them the most, right? Is it an arts academy like RAD? Is it a STEM school? Um, you know, what kind of program would their student really thrive in? And so we have that conversation with families. Um, and sometimes what happens is there actually aren't enough really good choices for parents uh, in community. And so that's sort of the other work that TEN does is when parents are not 
satisfied with the list in front of them. Um, we help them um, organize to build new school programs in their communities. Awesome, thank you, Ariel, so much for sharing that. Uh, can you talk a little bit about um, some of the some of those um, data things or some of those things? If, if I'm a new family and I am beginning the school choice process and needing to know where to begin, where to start, uh, what are some of those things that I should be considering or uh, looking looking out for when I'm trying to find the best school fit for my for my young learner? That's that's great. So um, a couple of things to know about school choice, just to kick us off. Um, there's multiple rounds of school choice. So round one actually closed in the middle of February this year. But if you're a parent who's listening to this and you're like, I forgot to fill out the school choice form um, for fall of 2022, that's okay because there's a round two that's about to open in April. If you're a parent who did fill out the school choice form, in February, you should be receiving a letter this upcoming week, the last week of March, about where your student got into school um, for next year in fall 2022. If you're a parent who did not fill out the school choice um, application, if you do not fill out a, a school choice application, you'll be opted into your neighborhood school, um, which is in some cases a great thing, um, but in some cases just not the right fit for students. Um, and it, it doesn't have to be because you're able to go to any school in the city. Um, and so if you're a parent who is starting to consider or reconsider um, which schools your students could possibly attend this coming fall, um, which I know the first day of, of school next year is so far off, but it's really important that you're engaging now in this work because if you get to the, you know, the beginning of August and you're trying to figure out where registration is and you haven't chosen a school, you'll just feel a little caught off guard, um, but we can still help you at that point, it's okay. But if, if it's possible, I really do recommend starting this process uh, really in, January or December, if you have the ability to. So if you're a parent that's that's hearing this and, and looking for a school for fall 2023 for their student, you can start taking tours now and considering your options now um, and then narrowing it down to five schools, which is what the district allows you to choose from. Um, so that you five five top choices and you list those in priority order um, in the school choice application, which is a school mint application. Um, and it's a very easy process. We also have programs where we will walk you through the actual process. Um, but as you're considering like the top five schools for your student, a couple of things that I think are really important, and I said this before, but the first is programming and sort of like school values. Um, I think it's really important to feel welcome in schools. Um, I think it's really important when possible, and I know this has not been possible for the last two years because of COVID, but it's becoming possible again, uh, to do a tour of schools, look at the student art on the walls, like look at the examples of great work that students are providing for their in their classrooms like observe a classroom, see what kind of energy um, exists, right? Go into the front office, like make a phone call. They're not picking up the phone. <laughs> like, you know, there's things that like, I, I guess it's like a vibe check on the school, which I think is really important. Um, but then the other thing is really looking at the school's data um, because unfortunately in DPS, not every school right now is likely to prepare your student um, for a life where they can read, write, and do math on grade level. I think it's really important to acknowledge that. Um, and so it's so we actually have a, um, a data dashboard that we use um, that's public. It's on our website, and I believe it's going to be in the chat um, on this Facebook Live. Um, but you can go on there, and you can actually put your zip code in, and you can see the schools that are surrounding your um, house or your place of work, whatever the convenient location is that's, you know, proximate to where your student is going to school. Um, and you can look at the quality of all of the schools in the neighborhood um, over a three year period. So you can look at both the proficiency rates of students, which is how many students in the school are on grade level. Um, and then you can also look at the growth that the school is making. Um, when we're looking at growth in terms of quality for schools, we always tell parents, growth should always be at 50% or higher. 50% growth means that the students have made one year's worth of growth in a year. They're making less than 50% of growth a year. Technically, what's happening is those students who are in third grade are still in third grade when they're moving to fourth grade. So below 50% is something that I would consider to be kind of a red flag. 
Wonderful, Ariel. Thank you so much for all of those tips and tricks. We definitely uh, encourage the vibe, the vibe checks, the tours, being in the school building, checking the data for that growth to make sure that your learner will be challenged and, and on track. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll, we will be adding those resources to the chat for you all to um, continue to look at the uh, 10 websites so that you can look at the data in your local neighborhood. Awesome. Um, so before I pass the mic, Ariel, are there any other resources or information that you would like to share with us around uh, the choice process to help to help our families? Yes, actually, I forgot something very important. Um, if you're a parent who has not participated in round one, or you're a parent who gets their letter next week and it's not the school you want your student to attend moving forward, round two begins the first week of April. But the difference between round one and round two is round one, you can fill it out, at, fill out the school choice application at any time. Um, and it doesn't matter. But once the application closes, it's a lottery and everyone has access to the same seats. Round two is first come first serve. So when it when round two opens, um, it's actually really important that you go in to the new school that you or call the new school that you're interested in selecting as your number one choice um, because they only have a certain number of seats left um, and those seats are given away at a first come first serve basis during round two. Um, and if you need help with round two um, school choice or your confused about you know what your letter says when you receive it in the mail next week, um, please feel free to reach out to us at 10. We're happy to help you through the process um, in a one-on-one -on -one conversation, in a group conversation, um, whatever you're most comfortable with. We do have access uh, to interpretation into multiple languages. So if you're someone who um, needs a different language, we're happy to accommodate um, and excited to accommodate. Um, so please feel free to reach out. We'll go ahead and put our website uh, in the chat. And also um, please feel free to message us on Facebook um, and please follow us on all other social media platforms too. Thanks so much. Awesome, thank you so much, Ariel. Uh, so I will now pass the mic over to Kelly. So Kelly is joining from RAD, which is a charter that is uh, applying for application in DPS currently right now. So she is approaching this and living this school choice process uh, in a little bit of a different way. Uh, so Kelly, again, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we'd love to learn a little bit more about uh, Radical Arts Academy and um, the um, offerings that you will have for your families. RAD's mission is to provide high quality arts-based learning, we call that ABL, in support of whole child development. And it's from a community responsive and culturally sustainable lens that promotes concrete pathways for student artists to, and, and students to learn through the arts. We're trying to prepare graduates to achieve their goals and pursue career readiness as artists, professionals, thought provokers, and leaders of tomorrow. Um, there's just so much creativity and artistic talent in the far Northeast. And so that's why we were trying to reimagine what educational program could be if it was centered on those strengths. We don't see a lot of innovative programming in the far Northeast East with regards to project-based learning and um, arts as a learning tool, not just enrichment. Love that and love that you have been a part of your community uh, for so long already. Can you tell us a little bit about um, what inspired you to make the change um, from being a community organization that was serving your community um, to making the change uh, for uh, becoming a charter school? I think it was mainly for me as a, an educator was how do you engage the engage students and families in in the programming aspects, but seeking academic and socio emotional learning outcomes. So if you are involved in programming, some schools don't have the capacity or it's just not a part of the priority to have arts instruction. 
So there's that was a that's a main component of our programming to go into schools and provide that as well as summer programming. But I have a primary um, interest and focus in literacy and early literacy learning. And I thought we need to combine those. The, the data is showing that there are other ways to learn. And I think we can utilize the arts to promote the, the interdisciplinary learning and connecting the, the content for academic outcomes. So that's why we get a lot of questions around, well, it's a great program, or it seems like a great idea as a program. Why the push for a school? Because it's extremely complicated <laughs> and, and very challenging. Um, but I think the students in the far Northeast deserve innovative programming. There's more than one way to do school. There's more than one way to do, to, to get academic outcomes and to get high test scores. And so that's why we wanted to look to extend that impact and do both. I love it. That's wonderful. So you all are slated to open your school in fall of 2023. Uh, so for families who are interested, you all will be on school choice round one for next year. Is that is that right on timing? If we're approved, we just yes, made our approved. application um, last Friday, actually. So, so we would have a year zero and then the following year we'd be ready for students. Awesome. Fantastic. And also, um, I did see the news um, that there is a community meeting happening in April. Uh, for uh, everyone to have the opportunity to share and um, about the value that RAD would bring to the local community. Uh, so that is something that we'll be sharing on the Root Ed, uh, social media channels. Uh, and I'm sure you can find it on the RAD channels as yeah. well. Uh, so we do encourage community to attend those events as well to support with uh, getting your charter approved. Yes, and definitely, and also to find out more and to ask questions and, and to, to demand that we answer um, how our model will work, why we think it will work, why we think it's um, needed for the Far Northeast. So we're going to present um, all the aspects of our model and be ready for hopefully lots of community to show up so that we can, we can share and, and build together. Awesome. And on that note, uh, if you had to share with the family some of those uh, primary pillars of your school that, that make it important for them to choose RAD uh, for their students, what would be some of those things that you would share with families when they're making the, uh, the, the decision on who to select for their round one and round two choices? Um, well, the first thing I previously mentioned is that arts is not extra. It's deemed it's not just enrichment or for students who achieve in that narrow box of what is considered to be um, proficient. It's not just if you're obedient or once you get your work done, it is a part and integrated throughout the program. It's essential and students learn through the arts. Also families with student artists and families who desire project-based learning and learning that is all about student choice and agency and um, models that prioritize social emotional learning. So all of our thematic units are social, social emotional learning. You get direct instruction in it every day as well as it's integrated with the arts and ethnic studies in our social justice thematic units. So those are would be important factors, as well as students who maybe they don't decide that they want to go on and pursue art as a career, but the type of learning that gives knowledge and skills that transfer into career readiness and other professions. So that design thinking is really essential and those habits of mind that artists use for the process and project based learning for owning your learning and presenting your learning that will be very beneficial even if students decide to pursue other avenues in their career in life. I love that. Uh, do you happen to have any success stories from any students who you've already worked with since you've been a big part of your community already? Uh, do you have a success story of a student who's participated in your programming where you've really seen that growth happen? I, I can think of a lot of students, but one in particular stays with me because it was the longest 
programming that we did for a summer programming with um, an elementary school. And she had a lot of anxiety around traditional literacy content. She was not performing at grade level in reading and writing. And so whenever we were doing the creative writing portion, she would get very anxious um, and always have to use the bathroom and spend a long amount of time in the bathroom to, to avoid those, those challenges. But once the program pro progressed and she was able to utilize her interest in music and make those connections, I saw a different side of her. She was in the music class, they were singing and I was eating lunch and I could just hear, like, is that that same student? I can hear her voice singing. And when I went in to observe, she was commanding the room and giving her ideas and working on choreography steps. And she was actually using the stanzas from the poem that she had made about her family. Um, and they incorporated into their collective songwriting. So it was a part of the lyrics. And once she was making those connections between the literacy and the music, she just really started to shine and it was meaningful for her. So she was engaged and motivated and that helped her with the harder parts um, of the, the reading and writing. And so that kind of, um, yeah, that's as cliche, the why. That connecting the arts with literacy really helped her. And it was just a month long program, but towards the end, she was able to access that grade level literacy content on her own more independently because of those connections. That is awesome. Thank you so much for, for sharing. And um, I think it's always those real life examples that helps us remember our whys and really to understand how beneficial programs like the offerings at RAD are so, so critical. So thank you. So now I'd love to transition us. We have a couple of questions that have come in through the chat. So I would like to make sure we have the opportunity to get to those. Um, Ariel, this first one will be for you. Uh, so what happens if I only pick one top choice? That's a great question. Um, we do not recommend just picking one top choice. Um, although the school that you put as number one, like the majority of DPS families get into their first placement. We're, it's, we're really lucky. Um, uh, there are some schools that have, um, you know, a longer wait lists. And if you didn't get into your first choice, you are put on the wait list for it. Um, and so you'll have a number, you'll hold the number on the wait list and the, um, and then you'll be placed in one of the other of your top five schools. Um, and so we always recommend doing all five um, because even if you, you know, don't actually want to go to the other four schools, um, you can re-participate in school choice in round four. Um, and so always fill it all out, um, but you're more than likely going to get into your top choice in DPS, or at least your first three choices. Wonderful, thank you. We have a second question for you as well. Uh, so this is talking about uh, data. Uh, so how do I know if minority students thrive based on data? That's a great question. Um, whenever possible, we actually disaggregate our data um, so that we can see how different subgroups are doing at particular schools. Um, and so that actually is available on our data dashboard. Um, but if you'd like to have a conversation specifically about a school, please do reach out because I think it's an, a really important conversation. Um, we've actually just asked DPS um, through the Colorado Open Records Act um, for additional data to be disaggregated so that we can analyze some of the interim data that's coming in right now from schools so that we can have a better understanding of how different subgroups are doing at, at each of our schools in DPS. So when they give us that data, please uh, be on the lookout. We're excited to release it um, and talk more about what it means for students across the district. Fantastic. And our last question is for you, Kelly, uh, and it is around engagement with RAD now. Are there any opportunities to engage with your programming uh, before your charter application is, um, before you find out about your charter application? Uh, so there's some already some families who are looking to engage with the work that you're doing. Yes. On our website, there is, on the about page, there's a place where you can enter your information for inquiries for 
to get a call back or an email and to find out more information as well as to fill out the intent to enroll. It's the way that DPS gauges interest for our programming. And you can list your, their student, their current school and their, their age. And that will, will go a long way. And we also have community design team meetings. And so if you fill out that inquiry, I can get back in touch with whoever is um, responding and we meet on Tuesdays. And so that's another way to engage. Fantastic. Uh, so this will be our final question for the afternoon. Our time went by so quickly together. Thank you again. Uh, so we'd love to hear both from Ariel and from Kelly. Uh, we can start with Kelly first for this one. Uh, and this is what advice would you give to parents as they're navigating the school choice system uh, when they're trying to get started as they're trying to discover programs like the offerings at RAD? What advice would you give on um, how to be most, su most successful in that process? Yeah, I definitely would defer to Ariel. She is the expert on this. A lot of things she, she's mentioned. I think that disaggregated data is key for me. Um, I want to know proficiency, I want to know growth, and I want to know what that looks like for students of color, for students who have free and reduced lunch, for students who have an IEP. So I, I'd want the disaggregated data. And I know in the COVID area, it's very, it's very hard, but I would want to visit the school, the schools that I was interested in, especially during unstructured moments. You want the data, you want to see what the lessons look like, the learning, but you can tell a lot about school culture and how your student will be treated and how they will be seen during the passing periods, during lunch, during recess. That tells you a lot about the, the culture, the school culture that students are internalizing and how happy they are um, when they're just being themselves. So I think that's that's huge. I'm not a parent, but as a teacher, that's what I would I would recommend. Wonderful advice. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you. Yeah, I love that. I think you know, as parents start to navigate the school choice system, I think the first thing is just like take a moment and celebrate like how brilliant your child is, um, because that's I think where this all stems from. Is right like. All of a sudden, you're putting your student into a space where you're hoping that their brilliance is fully realized. Um, and I think that really the first step, and this is you know one of the first questions we ask during our workshops, um, is like, what are your hopes and dreams for your child? Like, what do you see them doing in the future? What do you know that they're good at? What do you see them shine in? And what are the things that maybe they need more support around in order for them to really realize their brilliance? And so I think doing that like first deep celebration of the work that you've done as a family to grow such an incredible human. <laughs> um, but then second, like really envisioning, um, envisioning what, it, what kind of school it looks like for them to thrive. Um, and, and we have people do that before they even really look at their choices. Um, but once you've done that, I think, you know, the second thing is, is try and narrow it down um, to your to your top five choices um, by using a combination of observation, analysis of programming, um, and data, um, which we're happy to help with again um, at any time. Wonderful, Ariel. Thank you again. More good advice. We hope that this session was valuable today. And again, we are so grateful for Kelly and Ariel for joining us. We encourage you all to connect with RAD, to connect with TEN, to, to see all of the great work that they are leading within the community. Uh, we also encourage you to keep following Root at Denver on social media uh, so that we can continue to, to share updates uh, about our great partners like RAD and like TEN. Uh, and we're also excited uh, to welcome you back in just a couple of weeks for another Facebook Live on declining enrollment. Uh, we'll be sharing more information about that on social media in the next coming days, and we encourage you to join us then. And thank you again so much for being here today. Keep your questions coming in. If you have anything that we did not have the opportunity to talk about today, we are happy to keep the conversation going. So thank you again to our guests and thank you again for our audience for joining us this afternoon. I hope everyone has a great day.